we're back live. Okay. All right, we're back in live session and we have uh, one motion coming out of the in-camera portion. Uh, be it resolved the council rises, or sorry, be it resolved the council receives a report from Warden Uptegrove regarding the CAO's annual performance review as information. Can I have a mover and seconder for that? Moved by Deputy Mayor Hall, seconded by Councillor Gishardi. All in favor? That's carried. Okay, uh, are there any members of the public logged on it doesn't look like it uh there is not not this evening and no questions were submitted no sir okay all right we have two proclamations this evening the first is for national indigenous people's day whereas june 21st canada will celebrate national indigenous people's day this is a day for all canadians to acknowledge the unique heritage diverse cultures and outstanding contributions of first nations inuit and metis people and whereas in cooperation with Indigenous organizations, the Government of Canada chose June 21st, the summer solstice, for National Aboriginal Day, now known as National Indigenous Peoples Day. And whereas for generations, many Indigenous peoples and communities have celebrated their culture and heritage on or near this day due to the significance of the summer solstice as the longest day of the year. And whereas Shelburne is home to a strong Indigenous community and would like to acknowledge their continued contributions, now, therefore, I, Mayor Wade Mills, on behalf of Council, do hereby proclaim June 21st, 2023, as National Indigenous Peoples Day in the town of Shelburne. And the second proclamation is for Canadian Multiculturalism Day. Whereas June 27th is Canadian Multiculturalism Day, a day to celebrate the cultural diversity of Canadians and the history that brought us to this day. It was on October 8, 1971, in a statement to the House of Commons that Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau announced multiculturalism as an official government policy. The intent was not only to preserve the cultural freedom of all individuals, but also to recognize the cultural contributions of diverse ethnic groups to Canadian society. And whereas Canadians celebrate Canadian multiculturalism on June 27th, a day to discover and appreciate the wealth and diversity of Canadian society, show your love of Canada and your pride in being Canadian, and whereas the town of Shelburne is committed to advancing a culture of cooperation, equality, and respect with appreciation for the contributions of the various multicultural groups and communities, now therefore I, Mayor Wade Mills, on behalf of Council, do hereby proclaim June 27th, 2023, as Canadian Multiculturalism Day in the town of Shelburne, and I urge all residents to take notice of the importance of the diversity that makes up our lives and our community. Are there any council inquiries for tonight? Councilor Bonato. I have three of them, if I can bring them up. Then, um, staff, please direct people where they can go for updates, <laughs> flash pad. It seems that everywhere you walk, that seems to be the consistent question I get about the splash pad. I know that it's been mentioned that you've done something on um, Facebook or whatever regarding updates on the splash pad, but the questions are still coming out um, regarding um, size, what's happening with it, when's it gonna be finished, on and on and on. So if we can direct people to somehow, they're not getting the information out there they're not knowing where to look for it. Can we make sure that people get where to look for this information so that we're not consistently up, up uh, having to try to answer their questions? Uh, oh, Mayor Mills? Yeah. So through yourself, uh, Councillor Bonato, on the town project pages are all of the major projects and the splash pad is on there. There are photos from all of May from the installation all of the details that you just asked about are itemized, including the size and that it is a concrete base. It gives you a list of the amenities. It gives you all of the questions with respect to the pull down menus on the um, activities of a splash pad, what you wear, what you don't wear, including child diapers. There's significant information on that page. We, we have cross-referenced that with social media. The only thing we haven't identified is when it's opening. 
because we don't know. We're estimating and we haven't posted that. It just says to be determined. I'm happy to send the link to council. And certainly if you're getting inquiries, if you could flip that uh, to those that are, are asking you the questions, I don't think there's probably anything that's not addressed in all of that information. So that, I think that would be helpful if, if you could maybe just send the yeah. link and then I'll send you, know, you the link uh, uh, first thing in the morning. Okay. Yeah, I think the problem is people, while it's on the construction page or whatever, is navigating their way to get there. And I think that's maybe part of the issue that they're not getting the information because they're not navigating properly there. Can we maybe put a link right on our window? It is on the banner page. Uh, Town Projects is very high profile, um, but I'll, I'll certainly let, I'll just show you how it's navigated. If you enter it in the search bar, it takes you to Town Projects as well. Um, okay. So for example, the dog park was on there, the tennis court, pickleball courts, this project, these are all the major town parks and rec projects. Okay. Okay. Councilor Bonato, I, I think there's seems to be an issue with the microphone, or, or is it just me? It, I don't know. It's not well, on that, my side. That, that's better. Yeah, it's not on my side. Uh, so what I was trying to say is if um, we direct people to search just to go to the construction page that you mentioned through the search thing, they, they, they will find that information. And that, maybe that will settle that. The other inquiry I have is regarding the bike lanes. When are we going to see the paving starting on the bike lanes? Um, what what bike lanes? The Greenwood the markings that are on the road. Oh, oh so like the, the trails or, or the green? The sh the green. They're called sterile markings. Okay. Um, I call those the bike lanes. So, so Councillor Gashardi had, had brought a notice of motion, which which was supported a few meetings ago, that asked staff to come back with a, a report looking at other alternatives too. Um, and I believe that's still in the works. Denise, do you know when we're going to see that? So we haven't. Uh, it's not June. Um, it's probably more going to be July. And we're also going to hopefully you'll get some information on June the 26th as part of the Parks and Recreation Master Plan as it relates to trail linkages, which might actually provide some solutions to some of the concerns on on street. And then we look at potentially making corridors, uh, alternative transportation links that are not on main roads. But certainly at that report, we hadn't we hadn't come up with a solution yet um, and timing. We were also going to be looking at other traffic calming measures that the communities have implemented for more of the on-road type of uh, use. And my final question is, have we invited the Upper Grand School Board to a council meeting as for the last meeting? Jennifer? Uh, through your worship, uh, yes, I had sent out that email invite. Uh, subsequently, right after the, the last council meeting, I've not heard back from them as of yet, but I can definitely follow up with them. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. All right. Any other inquiries? Councillor Wagner? Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Reels. Um, Just a quick one. Um, I see that we've got um, some committee members uh, that will be appointed to the EDC, commi uh, EDC committee or whatever you want to call it. Um, any news on the library board? Deputy Mayor Hall. <laughs> uh, we have met as a committee and there'll be a report coming through on the next council meeting. Okay, cool. So, because right. I'm sure they're gonna ask me at the next meeting. <laughs> Thanks. Stay tuned, I guess. okay. All right, anybody else? Okay. All right, so the first report is a report from our CAO regarding uh, a couple of agreements with Upper Grand District School Board, uh, one dealing with Highland Park maintenance and, uh, and the other dealing with um, some encroachment issues with the high school. So Denise, I'll let you kind of walk us through that. Thanks, Mayor Mill. So certainly the 
maintenance agreement that we've had with the Upper Grand District School Board has been in place for some time. Um, it's a fairly dated agreement, although the majority of what the functionality of it has not changed. So this is just updating it to 2023. And we've gone through with um, the uses within the facility areas on who maintains what, and it's it's fairly similar to what we've had in the past. Um, the other um, unique uh, thing that we had to identify, and this was part and parcel of this assessment, was the confirmation that there's a about 10 meters of the uh, high school that is actually on the town of Shelburne property. And as opposed to looking at a sale of 10 meters or that process that would trigger a whole series of legal issues, it was cited that the most strategic approach was to just uh, have an encroachment agreement whereby that use of town property was authorized for a fee of $2 per year. So really, I'm not going to get into the, I guess, the uh, chart on what we cut, what area of the park is under our control. We've had an amazing relationship with the school board in terms of how this park is shared and managed accordingly. It also, um, in the agreement, you'll see that we've had the benefit of using their properties for parking, which is a tremendous opportunity for us. Um, there's very limited town property that is used for parking, just that one strip um, close in close proximity to the pavilion. So unless there's any questions regarding um, the inclusions of what is responsible, the responsibility of the town in the space, and what is the board? Um, we are recommending that we approve the new 10-year agreement, which has the opportunity to be extended for one year for three times, and that the encroachment agreement that is open-ended and is in perpetuity also be approved by council so that we can let the board know um, that that part of the school is safe and can continue to be used, jokingly, of course. Thanks, Mayor Mills. Okay. Any questions on that for Denise? No. Okay. Um, so, so we need just need a motion to to receive Denise's report and then uh, uh, provide for the reading and enacting of, of two bylaws. The first is bylaw 35-2023, uh, which is a bylaw to enter in uh, to an agreement with the school board for the use and maintenance of Highland Park. Second bylaw is number 36-2023, uh, which also is, is to enter into an agreement with Upper Grand. Um, for, uh, for an encroachment agreement um, for the property known municipally as 150 uh, 4th Avenue. Can I get a mover and seconder? Councillor Sample, seconded by Councillor Wegner. All in favor? Carried, okay. All right, the next report um, is from uh, our economic development officer. And Carol, I see you're online. Do you wanna to speak to this one, Carol? Yes, I will be. Just give me one second. Thank you, Mayor Mills. So um, the Economic Development um, Committee, um, one of our proposals that we put together was to expand um, the reach as far as the membership. So we successfully received three applications um, for businesses, and we also received um, applications from Workforce Planning Board and Headquarters Tourism. Um, after an extensive review of the applications, it was decided um, that uh, to um, accept uh, Althea Morgan's application. She comes with a fairly extensive background in policy development, and, and it was felt that it would she would be an important play an important role with regards to this economic development strategic plan. So um, I guess I, I think I'm hoping everybody's had a chance to review the report. Um, Charlene Hoffbummer was from Workforce Planning Board. She is the CEO of Workforce Planning Board. Uh, we work quite closely now with that organization with, in terms of gathering data, especially employment data. And Headwaters Tourism, uh, again, we work very closely with them now, also with regards to our tourism development. Okay. Were there any questions? Questions for Carol? No. Carol, sorry to interject. I just want to clarify the person is with Central Counties Tourism, not Headwaters Tourism. Oh, sorry, yes, Central Counties Tourism. 
and and we've partnered with them yeah. on, on a number of occasions so okay all right uh if there aren't oh sorry councillor bonato what um this does not stop other people from joining edc from outside like as far as committee size i'm tr still trying to struggling to figure out what our committee full committee size would be on the edc Denise? Uh, thanks, Mayor Mills. Uh, Councillor Bonato, certainly. Um, this process was a follow-up to the prior staff report that expanding the membership outside of the boundaries of Shelburne would be undertaken. We did do an extensive promotion looking for people to consider applying as organizations and fulfilling a certain, um, I guess, stream of business needs. If there were additional businesses or representatives that would be interested in serving, they could remit. Similarly, they would be looked at and a report would be brought back to council um, recommending their appointment. Okay. I'll leave it at that for now. Okay. All right. So if there's no other questions, uh, look for a motion then to receive the report and to make the uh, formal appointments of Elthea Morgan, Chuck Thibault, and Charlene Hoffbauer to the EDC committee. Moved by Councillor Gashardi, seconded by Councillor Sample. All in favor? That's carried. Okay. Thanks, Carol. Okay, the next item is uh, a memo to Council from our Municipal Grant Funding Committee. Um, they had re-reviewed a, a couple of, of the applications just in light of some uh, changing information. Um, Deputy Mayor Hall, do you want to speak to that at all? I mean, it's fairly self-explanatory, I think, when you read the memo, but... Yes, thank you. Uh, again, it is fairly straightforward. Uh, we did do some reconsideration based on some of the changes that have taken place. Uh, and as such, what we put before you is uh, with regards to the change in the, the Heritage Music Festival, we hold those funds uh, for consideration at a later date, uh, pending uh, the outcome of or the situation uh, as we move into the third quarter. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, so look for a motion then to uh, receive the committee's memo um, and uh, be it resolved that a donation in the amount of $300 be made to the Dufferin County Multicultural Foundation and that we place the $5,000 originally awarded to the Rotary Club for the Heritage Music Festival into a reserve for future consideration of other local food security needs, including an additional 2023 donation to Shepherd's Covered Food Bank on an as needed basis. Moved by Councillor Bonato, seconder for that. Councillor Wagner, all in favor? That's carried, all right. And the last item in the regular agenda is a letter from Supreme Slow Pitch and they are seeking permission to serve alcohol at Highland Park uh, on July 15th. Um, Jennifer, can you kind of remind us how that policy works? Yes. Uh, so in order for them to serve alcohol, they do require council's permission to do so on town property. And then in turn, they will receive their permits from the Alcohol and Gaming Commission. Okay. So, so they have to submit something with their application for, for the liquor permit? That's correct. With the town's consent on it. Okay. Yes. All right. Thoughts on this? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was just going to note they have submitted um, their insurance requirements, their minimum $5 million, their permits through the facility, the Parks Recreation Facilities Clerk. They are compliant with everything at this point. Okay, perfect. Councillor Bonato? This isn't the first year they've done this. They've done this a number of years in the past. It's always worked out very well. They they seem to be organized and know what they're doing. So I don't have an issue with uh, giving them permission to go ahead and do it. Okay. Um, and, and just for the benefit of 
others watching who, who maybe haven't had a chance to, to read the letter, they, they are proposing that for every beer or cooler sold, a dollar will be donated to the Shelburne Hamper program. And then they're also um, proposing to, to donate the empty cans to the beer store in support of, of a leukemia drive that they do. And they're also going to be setting up donation bins uh, for food and unwrapped toys uh, in, in support of the hamper program as well. So, I mean, there, there's certainly a community contribution aspect to this as well. So, all right, uh, if there, oh, Councillor Sample. Um, just a quick question. Um, are they, I know we've helped out other uh, organizations with fencing. Are we doing that? Are we setting it all up for them or are they responsible for that? Does anybody know? They asked for that yet, Jennifer? I'm not sure if they've asked for that within uh, their permits. I don't, I didn't have a copy of the actual permit. We always recommend to them that it has to be fenced, right? Anyways? That would be part of their permit requirement, yes. Yeah, okay, okay, good, thanks. Councilor Bernardo. I would move a motion that we grant them permission to carry uh, to have alcohol at the uh, mall times. Okay. Is there a seconder for that, Councillor Sample? All right. All in favor? That's carried. All right. Any notices of motion for tonight? Okay. Uh, communications. Anything there that anybody wants to deal with? Councilor Bonato. So, I got two of them that I'd like to bring forward. Uh, number five, the letter from the residents regarding the pump house, and number seven, the letter from the linemen regarding the uh, fire board uh, and the county of Dublin. And on number five, I think with them asking for trees and a fence to be put up in that area there, um, as well as um, information as to what's happening in the area. I think we need to address that letter in some form or way, as they are residents. Apparently, their diesel generators have been working for quite a period of time in that area, creating noise and smoke. I think that's unfair. And I can see their point if they're going to have to put up with a diesel generator that may turn on and and cause them issues. And the fact that, uh, you know, you do buy a house and you don't want your back looking out your window at, at a brick pump house and a diesel generator, maybe at some form or way we need to respond to them. They do understand why we are doing the pump house and expanding it, but I think we do need to respond to that letter in some form or way to our residents. So I don't know who wants to. I, I believe there's been quite a lot of discussion with, with at least a couple of the residents. Um, Jim, I know you've been involved in that. Do, do you wanna give sort of a brief update as to where things are? Uh, sure I can, uh, through your worship. Uh, we have been in, in constant contact with this uh, resident since the start of the project. Uh, we kept them very informed and actually our engineering group does drop by uh, every few weeks to update them because there are concerns that come in. Uh, unfortunately, with this upgrade to this pump house, the original pump house was uh, constructed in 1978-1979. The electrical uh, supplied to the building itself, and it is a pretty long run from Cedar back to that pump house in the park, uh, did definitely need to be upgraded. So the original plan from Hydro One was to have that hydro equipment to us by February, but uh, similar to a lot of our other projects that we've had uh, in recent times, uh, COVID, uh, shortages of products, that sort of thing, the uh, equipment needed for that isn't, uh, isn't here yet, our best estimate so far is that that will be in in July. Uh, so until then, for the construction of the building, they do have to run uh, the generators. It was a little more taxing earlier in the year because they were doing interior works, uh, blocking the concrete, grouting, that sort of stuff that they did have to keep it running 24 seven, which I'm sure was irritating to the residents. But we had to keep, keep, keep the heaters going so we could dry out the material so they could paint the interior. So. 
we have been keeping up with the residents uh, substantially, uh, keeping them updated, that sort of thing, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, there wasn't originally a landscape plan to tree that. We were going to leave it the way it was. Um, it is fenced, although it be a chain link fence that is through there, but uh, uh, there is a possibility there could be trees down the road put in there, but we do have the chlorine contact loop uh, is right in there up against that fence, as well as communication lines for the data circuit. Uh, so we can't hit those lines there either. So we are we're going to look into that a little further this week with our uh, electric, our engineers, SBA, uh, to see what we can do. But there is also a trail connection that needs to be reinstated there too, which is coming around the pump house and it does connect to the back of those homes along Muriel uh, and eventually be connected into future developments further to the west end of town. So. Okay. So there is quite a bit going on there. And I guess a formal reply to the neighbors, maybe the residents, me from the town, whatever. So I know they sent us a letter. We need maybe to send them a formal reply back. Uh, the other one was number seven, the letter from Langton regarding the fire board. I'm not sure what they what they uh, they're after there because I, I know that the fire chiefs already meet in regards to um, the needs of the uh, fire prevention within the whole of Dufferin County. So I'm not 100 percent sure what Langton's after. Yeah, I, I, I can give you a bit of context on this. So th this this came up at the Shelburne and District Fire Board last Tuesday. Um, it, it was supported at that board. Um, also received the support of Chief Snyder, although he doesn't have a vote, as you know, but but he certainly spoke in, in support of, of the notion of it. Um, it, it. It's not looking, you know, as you mentioned, the chiefs do meet in terms of sort of coordinating efforts and whatnot, but th this this is designed really, I think, to take a deeper dive into possible uh, new governance models when it comes to providing fire services. Um, as, as some of us know who are around last term, the county went through a, um, an, an operational review, service delivery review, and, and one of the things that was highlighted was that fire services within the county uh, should be looked at in particular, it was noted by the consultants that the the way that fire services are delivered in Dufferin County through these joint municipal boards is a, is a bit of an anomaly um, throughout the rest of the province that there really is not much precedent anymore, at least, uh, to, to operate that way in Ontario. Um, so the suggestion from those consultants was, was to look at um, either getting rid of those joint boards and, and looking at just direct municipal delivery of fire services. Uh, or I, I think the other sort of broad suggestion, although there wasn't much detail given, was, was that some sort of countywide provision of fire services be looked at. So to, to cut to the chase, Melanchthon was, I think, looking notionally at least to pick up where that service delivery report left off and say, okay, let's, let's get some subject matter experts who, who really know the business of, of fire service to, to come in and make some recommendations as to possible options going forward, whether that's a countywide service, whether that's a series of a, of a few different direct municipal services, or whether the way we're doing it now is perfect and, and we don't need to change anything. Um, one of the members on the Shelburne board suggested that we leave that up to the chiefs to, to advise us as to the best way forward. Chief Snyder was, was quite clear that he didn't think that was appropriate. I agree with him. Um, one additional point that I'll mention, this also came to County Council last Thursday. Um, and, and because there were a couple of members absent, um, Councillor White decided to defer it to the next County Council meeting. But based on the discussion, I think it's probably fair to say that there is support um, around the county council table to endorse this to at least get a study going uh, and, and to have the county cover the cost of that through our emergency management fund. So that, that's the long and the short of it. But isn't fire uh, delivery a lower municipal uh, thing that we are required to do it, not a countywide one? 
Not, not necessarily. I mean, we, we, ha we have to provide fire service, but there are a number of lower tier municipalities that don't have their own fire service. They contract somebody else. So in theory, you know, if, if one of the options that these guys came back with was that County of Dufferin supply it, um, you know, th there'd be some sort of funding mechanism or, or just simply through the, the county levy that the lower tiers would fulfill their obligation to provide fire services through the upper tier. Not saying that's the way to do it. I'm just saying that was one of the options that was discussed that potentially could come out of such a report. Deputy Mayor Hall. I would even go one step further and put forward a motion that we support this, sending it to the municipalities as well as the noted fire boards. Okay. And, and given that the motion was deferred at county, I, I think that's appropriate if, if, if that's how you feel. And, and then at least that lets county council know that somebody else is behind it as well. So is there a seconder for that? Councillor Fegan? Okay. Any further discussion on it? All in favor? That's carried. Okay. All right. Th those are the only two, Councillor Bonato? Yeah, for me. Okay. Uh, Councillor Fegan? Just wondering if anybody can give me a little more detail on number six. Uh, this is in referring to uh, Orangeville supporting uh, Bill 74 about the Missing Persons Amendment Act. Um, it looks to me, if I'm understanding this correctly, that they're supporting a motion to expand the Amber Alert to uh, facilitate uh, the search for missing persons who, because of their age, disability, or other circumstances, whether temporary or permanent, is in a greater risk than the general population. If this is something that needs to be expanded on it, and again, I'm, I just need a little bit more context on what the bill is, but if it's what I think it is, then it's something that I'd like us to throw our hat in as well. We, we've already done that. Have we? Yes. I put forward a motion a while back on that one there to support it. Okay, thank you. Then I'll withdraw that. Okay. All right. Um, number 14, I, I just wanted to mention, so, so th this relates back to a, a motion that I think Councillor Bonato brought uh, in, in support of Bill 5. Um, th that bill was not successful through, through the Ontario legislature. Um, when, <clears throat> when I read a, a bit of the, uh, the reporting after the fact, I, I believe the numbers were 155, I think, municipalities across Ontario of what, close to 250 in total, um, had had passed motions in support of this, um, but it wasn't successful. So the, um, the the advocates in favor of it are vowing to keep pushing the, the cause, but Bill 5, as we know it, I guess, is essentially dead in the water at this point. So, um, Denise, did you have anything additional on that that, that you've heard? Premier Mills, uh, no, I just know that AMO and there's um, a board meeting or a, on the 22nd of June, I'm sure this issue will be discussed. Most of the municipalities that responded did so in response to AMO's motion and significant review that they had done and the legislative analysis that they had completed in terms of what should be changed in the Municipal Act to provide this type of oversight. So I, I, to your point, I don't think it's over, hopefully, or maybe it will be resurrected in a different format because the essence of what it was trying to achieve um, is not something that's going to go away. Councilor Bonato? I've been following up on it. I read, uh, kept reading on after, and my understanding is that the government did not support it at that point in time because they felt there was not enough, uh, the scope was too narrow. There were some, some things that they were worried about that might uh, cause malicious uh, removal of people or whatever. That was their excuse for not supporting it. But they are still considering, they said they would consider bringing it back as a government motion at a future date with more study. So I'm, I'm, I know that Bill 5 itself is dead, but the member that did bring it forward um, said he was hopeful that the government 
would bring it forward again if it's not unusual for a private member's bill to get knocked down and the government turn around and bring it back in that format that suits them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else from communications? Okay. Can I have a motion then to receive the remaining items? Councillor Fegan, seconded by Councillor Bonato. All in favor? It's carried. All right, and just before we do uh, confirming bylaw and wrap up, our clerk has offered to give us a quick crash course on finding the projects page on our website. So I think Jennifer's gonna share the screen. Just a few minutes of your time is super easy to, to go through the website, but just thought for others that may be watching, yeah. um, I will share my screen. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, this, so is the, this, this is the home page, right? This is the home page, yes. And so uh, above, um, when you scroll your mouse over these headings, town hall, explore and play, um, living here, you'll see there's an A to Z services. And when I'm trying to find and locate something, what I do is I go to this and you can see that everything is alphabetized. So if you're looking for bylaw enforcement or bylaws, if you're looking for development charges, economic development. So for the town projects page, it's of course alphabetized. We go scroll down to T, there's town projects and it'll come up and it'll see everything here. You've got your parks and recreation, your Jack Downing, your splash pad, everything is on there. So if anyone is ever having difficulties, I usually direct them to the A to Z services and it'll give them a list of everything that's been placed on the website. Okay. Quick overview. Perfect. Councillor Sample. Yeah, so I did a uh, quick on the Google and if you just type in Town of Shelburne Projects, it takes you right to that link. Oh, even better. <laughs> yes, <laughs> shorter, <laughs> faster. <laughs> Sorry, Jennifer, not to, because it's a short meeting. Do you mind going back and just pulling up the splash pad so that you can actually show what I referenced to Councillor Bonato in terms of the significant detail on the project? Sure. Then I will not email it because you won't need it. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Jennifer. Everyone can see that. So is the project starting? Some pictures, background, history. I'm just going to scroll through quickly. Features, amenities, goals and outcome. Here's the reports. Frequently asked questions. To be, you know, rules and regulations. Not allowed. Fairly detail oriented, absolutely. So Jennifer, can you just scroll up where it actually explains? There it is right there. It's so too quick. Um, keep it a little bit. I think it just exactly says how many square meters the park is. Keep it down a bit. Sorry. Under here. background and history, I think it's there, right there, um, right there. So if you go under goals and outcome, the first splash pad, it says the splash pad is a 25, uh, 2,500 square foot, 232 meters. And that's basically the size. Then it gives you the features and amenities. Um, there's five buckets. If you need to know how many buckets there are, um, there's an aqua bosch, there's spray and splash, there's an activator. We have accessible parking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you go to the pull down menu where it's actually down below, which we call, um, usually we call that the kids under that, you can push or click on every single one of those based on those questions. Certainly what we do is if there's questions that we get that we haven't addressed, we usually add a pull down menu to make sure that, that a, that's a frequent question we get. We wanna make sure we're adding that because other parents or other family members or other community members may have the same question. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks for that. Just uh, one more thing. Yep. We're just talking about the splash pad there. I noticed uh, I wasn't by there. I was away all weekend, but I noticed on Friday, I think it was, there's still a pile of uh, looks like leftover stuff from the assembly there, like wood crates and a been, been a pile of shambles there. Um, do you know, if, does anybody know if that's been cleaned up yet? I wasn't by today yet, but 
Just wondering if that's going to be looked after because it does take up probably about three parking spots there. Jim? Sorry, I didn't, sorry, I didn't bring it up earlier. <laughs> uh, through your worship, I wasn't by today myself. I know other staff members were out taking photos of it, that sort of thing, checking on the progress of the electoral, that sort of thing. So I'll, I'll follow up with them tomorrow. But uh, last time I was up, there was material that still needed to be cleaned up there before they get into the final grading sod, that sort of thing anyway. So. All right. Okay. Uh, motion for the confirming bylaw. Councillor Sample, seconded by Deputy Mayor Hall. All in favor? Carried. And a motion to adjourn. Deputy Mayor Hall, seconded by Councillor Bonato. All in favor? Carried. All right. Thank you all.